So, Alyssa was not so nice at the end of season one. Debatable. I mean, she was trying to save his life. And I feel like when it's a toss-up like that, yeah. at least he's still alive. It is really sad. I get why people are angry. I get why people are upset. I was too. I was right there with him. Um, but yeah, that's where we left off. So where are we going to head in season two? I mean, I can't give too many details. You can. It's just between us here. Right. This is. You guys are just part of this little secret society now. Um, <laughs> welcome, acolytes. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I feel like I'm going to get in trouble if I spill too much, but how can I put this? We... We're going to answer some questions, but there will be more questions, as always. Um... Yeah, but I'm hoping that it gets resolved, personally. But if it gets resolved, then there's no turmoil for season three. Exactly. So this is the world we live in. <laughs> um, so what's it like being here at Comic-Con with all the fans? It's, it's awesome. I've never been to Comic-Con before. It's my first time. This is your yeah, first time. I'm a newbie. Oh. And there's just so much love and support, and everyone's just so passionate about the different characters and the shows that they love, and it's just such... Uh, awesome energy to be around and it's a lot but I'm so excited to be here. Yeah. Have you gotten any negative feedback from the fans about about you know wiping his memory? Absolutely it was <laughs> I got a lot I mentally but I knew that like going in I was like oh I mentally prepared myself but yeah a lot of the comments were how could you do that and you're like I hate you how why would you wipe their memory but it was always but when a second t uh, season two so it's like it's what we want, it's what we hope for, and I, I feel the same way, though. It is, it's upsetting. Um, if you could write for Alyssa, what would you have her storyline? Uh, well, I'm definitely not as talented of a writer as Dennis and our whole crew, um, but I think, yeah, I want to see her move up within the order uh, at a faster pace, and I think... It'd be cool if she was above Vera at some point so that, you know, maybe she was calling the shots more. And, um, yeah, because I think she is, she's got a great moral compass and a lot of integrity, and I feel like she would be a great leader. So if I could write the show, uh, I think I would want to see her definitely move up. So there's a unicorn, and it's made out of diamonds, and uh, I'm a cage fighter, and uh, no. You don't look like a cage fighter <laughs> <Yeah>. to me. <laughs> I'm glad you said that. Um, what can I tell you about season two? Absolutely nothing at the moment, um, but I can tell you what I'm excited for. Yeah. I'm excited uh, to get a chance uh, at a reconciliation or some kind of reunion with Hamish's girlfriend, the, the girlfriend that's passed away. There's a mention of her in the story. It's clear that there is, like, there's a heartache there. There's a grief. Um, but because he's such an armored guy, you know, he has all this thick armor that protects, you know, his vulnerable side. And I think it's because he's terrified at losing someone else, you know? He's sort of, he's, he's the guardian of these pups, of these wolves, and I think what's funny is no one really takes his authority too seriously, but that being said, he is a large reason, I think, for why everyone's lived as long as they can, and I think he takes that responsibility very, very seriously. Um, and it's a magic show. I would love to get a ch just a moment of reunion between him and Cassie, even if it's just her going, Look, man, you really got to move on from this, you know? Okay. <laughs> Something like that, yeah. So talk to me, because you, you touch upon the humor, which this show is really serious, but it has those humorous elements to it. So what does that kind of bring to the show? Such an incredible feeling of... Um, it's refreshing, is what it really is. Like, I really fell in love with this script the moment I read it, um, even in the audition process. Um, they gave me uh, Jack, the character, uh, to audition for before I, I got Hamish, and it was so self-aware without really spilling the beans, you know? Like, no, we're not aware that we're in a TV show, but at the same time, there's references to pop culture, things that are happening in present day, so it's relatable, it's very dark, it's got this incredible old-school horror vibe to it with uh, a lot, you know, a lot of the special effects we used were, were real effects, you know? Uh, real, real special effects, and, you know, just to see that alone 
like the wizardry behind that, how these people create these smoke effects and these monsters, it's amazing. Yeah, it, they really are talented, they really are, are artists. Absolutely. Um, even in the detail that you could see, we had a giant warehouse where we shot most of the interior uh, scenes and locations. And just to step into these, like you walk two feet and all of a sudden you're in some big library. There's all these old books there and little artifacts and you're going like, what is all this stuff? And it only gets glanced over, you know, in the show. Maybe the camera will pan over it for a second. But you know some guy has really, really labored over this. And just to walk into a world like that with so much detail, it makes it easy. It makes it easy to just step into the shoes of these people and go, oh, yeah, this is the mansion. Yeah. Well, I'm going to say this wrong. Why does Vera have the Vadi Macum? The Vade Macum. Oh, see, I knew I was going to say it wrong. Why do I have it? Because I need all the power and all the control, and I've trapped him in a book. And it's in my desk, and why wouldn't I want to have it? Um, no, of course, I, I think Vera is very protective of her, her magical objects. And something that could wield that kind of power, she is going to keep safe in her clutches. <laughs> well, we all thought it was destroyed. Yeah, you did. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh -huh. That's what I wanted you to think, wasn't it? <laughs> so what can we expect from season two? Will um, Edward be coming out of the book at some point? I have no idea. Uh, no one's giving us any information because they don't trust us <laughs> with secrets. Um, no, I think um, we've, we've read the first two episodes and I think they're so fun and hilarious. There's a lot of confusion, a lot of sorting out what just happened, you know. So um, I'm really looking forward to that. I don't know if I'll let Kevin Tree out of the book. Or, uh, or what will happen to him. No, I, uh, I have as much information as you do. <laughs> well, you've read two episodes. That's true, I have a little, little bit more. Little bit more but I'm not allowed me. to speak about it. Or I will oh, get trapped in the body make him. <laughs> All right, so what can we talk about? Tell me where you'd like to see Vera go in season two. You know, I, I'd like to see a little bit more of who Vera is underneath the facade of severity that she always has. Um, I think there's a backstory there that I would like to find out. I also appreciate seeing her take take all of the kids under her wing. You know, I feel like she really does love them all, even though she's a giant bee about it. <laughs> but, uh, so I, I'd like to see some more of that. I'd like to maybe go outside once or twice, because <laughs> I'm always inside. But, um, yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm, these guys are such great writers that I'm never like, oh God, I wonder what's, I'm like, I can't wait to see what's gonna happen to, to myself and everyone else. So it's always really exciting for me. Were you surprised at all about the reaction from um, fans about the end of season one with the werewolves getting their minds kind of, I don't want to say they're erased, but just really um, buried deep? They were pissed and I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> the entire plot of the season. <laughs> that would be awesome. Okay, well, I'm not going to do it. Um, Randall in season two, he's a, he's a lot, uh, he's very similar to Randall in season one. Uh, he just doesn't remember that yet. <laughs> <laughs> what happens when they get their memories back? What's going to happen? Chaos. Yes. Were you in? Were you, did you see the panel? Uh, no. Oh, okay. All right. Give me all the deets from the panel. I mean, yeah. They, well, we read a scene from from season two. I guess that might be out there or whatever. But um, there's some crossover between the wolves and the order in season two, which could be interesting to see uh, where that goes or or how deep that goes. So we'll see what happens. Where would you like to see Randall go in season two, if you could write it? <laughs> oh, man. Hmm. I just answered this question, but I want to give you, like, a different answer, you know what I mean? I want, oh, I want you to tell me what you This exact same think. answer? I don't care. <laughs> mm, I think, I think it would be interesting if, um, if Randall explored more of his, like, vigilante side. Because he, he equates being a werewolf like being a superhero, but uh, I think it would be interesting to see him become more of an anti-hero at some point maybe, just to see like a darker side, I think that could be fun. Yeah, maybe the other guys are going soft and he's like, no, we need to keep, stick to our mission or something. I like that actually, that would make it more interesting, don't you think? Yeah. Talk to Dennis, might be too All late, right, maybe season three. Talk to me a little bit about the fans. They're excited about the show. They're very passionate because some of them were very unhappy with the way season one ended. Yeah, so. I mean, luckily I didn't see any of that that hate. I saw it yeah. on uh, like Sarah's Instagram yeah. and like the main page. For the, oh. 
Um, I think part of the 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 anger, or it was more just like we, it's, you can't end on a cliffhanger. We want more, but that's all you know. Part of the storytelling process, right? You need to to hook them in, and 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 luckily the fans were were so great in helping us get a season two, so we can now explore uh, this future for the characters. Yeah. For season two, we're starting off where. Uh, we're starting where we left off in season one, where the werewolves are powdered and where the order is um, reclaiming all of their magic artifacts and things like that. So going into it, uh, we're going to find out exactly how much the werewolves remember, how much we don't remember. Um, and also, we can't forget that we have wolf hides attached to us. And so what primal instincts are going to surface from there? But there's going to be uh, new characters. There's going to be new love interests. And there is going to be a lot more comedy, just like in season one. We're really, um, we're really leaning into that for this upcoming season. So I'm really excited to share it with everyone. We talked a little bit about the comedy with the others because it's not um, invasive in a way. It doesn't take you out of the show, but it, it really does help to lighten the mood a little bit. So for you, do you find that helpful as an actor or do you find it to be distracting in a way? I find it so helpful to crack jokes and to keep it light. I think that um, that's a reflection of like how I live my life normally. Um, I think that's also a huge a huge reason why we've had the fan base that we've developed um, is because of that comedy. And there are so many teen supernatural shows which are great and I love. Um, but none of them quite have that same comedic timing and comedic element that we do. And I think it's something that makes us uh, really unique. Tell me about your feelings when you first read the original scripts that you were in. Um, so when I auditioned, I didn't actually get, oh no, I did get a full pilot. Um, and But I didn't get much about my character because I think she only had like one or two scenes in the pilot. Um, but um, like I said in the panel, like all I got really was like she was like this ditzy, privileged <laughs> girl. Um, but I think I remember reading one monologue. I think it was when I was, um, like doing the sigils for my with my tutor, um, that I kind of realized was like, oh, Gabrielle's a lot smarter than she's letting people know, and I think that's what really hooked me on to her and to the series. Yeah, she gets a lot of hate from fans. Does that concern you at all? It does not concern me. It, however, concerns my mom. Yeah, yeah, she, Get that. yeah, yeah. Which I mean, I don't blame her, but it was funny because like Netflix posted a photo of me as Gabrielle and I got a phone call from her and, and I was like, hey mom, like what's going on? And she's like, I'm I'm just reading the comments on 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 the photo on Instagram and people are just mean. They're just mean. Aww. She's like, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna let them know. I was like, Mom, Aww. don't worry about it. I was like, it's a compliment. Like they're super invested in the show. And I mean, like Gabrielle's not the nicest human being right now, you know what I mean? So but she was so offended. She was like, they should know that you're an actor, that this is not really who you are. I was like, don't worry about it, mom. So yeah, Mama Tronco. Yeah. She's a little protective. She's a mama bear, yeah. yeah. So, but at, by the end of season one, there's, I think the fans are also a little mad at Alyssa, just as much. I know, uh, but aren't you too? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I was pissed when I read that. I was like, are you kidding me? I was like, you could have done this in episode one and you chose to do it 10 episodes after? I'm like, that's awful. But it kind of leaves us with potentially a little bit of a reboot going into season two. I mean, if you want to look at that way, but I was I was upset. But I guess it is like kind of a writer's dream to kind of have a clean slate, and it really can go anywhere. Yes. So I think that's what the exciting thing is. Yeah. So where would you like to see Gabrielle go in season two? Um, I would like to, I mean, I really love her dark side, but I, but I feel like, she kind of, she kind of has a missing piece of like why is she kind of like this like what's what's happening like why a backstory a backstory yeah. almost you know just to tell people that she's not a bad person mm, she yes. just got a little carried away <laughs> where did the idea from this for the show come from where brainchild came up with oh that? man it it started out as a it started out as a conversation between myself and and Chris at Netflix where um, you know we were just riffing on what monsters we loved. Mm. Uh, and, and it was like one of those like, you know, first date moments where he's like, you like werewolves? I like werewolves. And, and you know, and then, you know, we, you know, we just sort of riffed from there. And then I, I said to him, I'm going to go off and come up with a pitch. 
and, and the, the order sort of grew out of that initial conversation. Are you surprised at the fan reaction, how much they loved the show? I'm thrilled with it. Gratified. Uh, gratified, relieved. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thrilled for sure. Uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a pretty amazing experience uh, that I've never had before where you have a show um, that gets released globally simultaneously, yeah. right? Like yeah. generally you do a TV series, it airs in certain countries at certain periods of time, and there's a slower sort of rollout and reaction to it. But this was like instantaneous and, and really, I, you know, really I have really a fun exciting. story about this if I can. You yeah, remember? Please. So my daughter and I were down in the Dominican Republic when it got dropped, and so we started watching two episodes every night. So we, you know, polished it off while we were still down there. She's a Comic-Con sort of kid, does the cosplay, all the rest of it. And uh, she said to me one afternoon, well, Mom, your show's going to be a hit. I said, why is that? And she goes, there's already fanfic. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that means definitely. It's got a following. It's definitely going to be big. Yeah. Um, let's talk about season two, because I feel like you can almost reboot the show because the werewolves, I keep telling people I don't feel like they've lost their memory. I feel like they're rep they're like suppressed. Right. So yeah. where are you going to Maybe we should her? get her in the room. Yeah. 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 That's an interesting theory. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, uh... I want credit. I want writing credit. <laughs> no, we're going to have you sign that. Yeah. Uh... We have documents with yeah. dates. Uh, <laughs> I've got it on video. Yeah. Um, well, it's, uh, you know... Uh, it is an opportunity for a reboot if you want to take it that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, but I'm not sure we're going to take it that way.